What is up, guys? It is the Sound Alchemist here with Grish One. We're back at it to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater War. Yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, simply comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. And that is what young man C R L Page did. He asks, is there any possibility for Rogel Dorn to return? Yes. So the whole storyline behind Dorg returning is that he's going to be secluding himself on an island. And then you're going to see a shadowy figure with a cloak walking up, handing him an epic thunder hammer. And then you see him with his regular hand and a mechanical hand. He will grab this thunder hammer and just toss it back and walk away. Yes. And then everybody's going to get mad because there's no way that Rogaldorn would do that. It's just not in his character. And then throughout the entire story, you're going to realize that Rogaldorn is not really the Rogaldorn that you knew from the Horus Heresy. He's just some crazy new character that was created because it has to fit this storyline that Disney's trying to put out. Uh, and then you're going to be upset. Not me. I'll, I'll like it. <laughs> well, I, I was a little upset. I didn't like his, his role. Because that's, that's, what he's, that's what he's there to do, man. But Yoda yeah. Yoda said it. I mean, uh, Ghost uh, Ferris Menace said it. <laughs> Would it be Ghost Ferris Menace or Ghost the Emperor? Ghost the Emperor. Yeah, because he's the wise one. Yeah, he'd be the Yoda. Anyways, Rogaldorn, if he comes back, he will come back, I think, as a big, like, heroic stance or whatever, because he is the Vigilant. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a chance that he is not completely dead. Um, he will just come back with maybe a robotic hand. And, um, yeah. Yeah. What I think is that they actually took Dorn prisoner and they're like doing experiments and stuff on him. Um, who took prison? The, the, the chaos. chaos. Abaddon and Somebody. his peeps. Mm -hmm. Somebody did. And like maybe he was like going through a warp portal and he tried to get out and when the portal closed, his hand, his hand was chopped off. <laughs> something, could, something like that. That like could that. be a possibility, I guess. I didn't know that the warp worked that way. It probably doesn't. <laughs> but that would be really nice. Yeah. Uh, if, if he does come back, I do feel like he's going to come back when Terra gets invaded or when like Gilliman and his force is like almost depleted. Mm -hmm. Some, something along those lines where it would warrant a, a heroic person from the past to come back. Right. But those are just speculations and theories. So sorry. Next question. Cage Schultz. If a Space Marine chapter is wiped out, but only one survivor remains, would they be would they be given command of a guard regiment, or would they just be absorbed into another chapter? Who and who and who? So say a Space Marine chapter is destroyed. There's only one survivor left. Oh. What would happen to this guy? So he would go back to his home monastery or chapter world, whatever it is, fortress monastery, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and he just has to rebuild and it takes it takes years and years and years to rebuild because he is just like Luke Skywalker uh, <laughs> Where he needs to build a new Academy and by the Academy. I mean bring in new, new initiates recruits, recruits yeah. gather whatever You know is left of his chapters. I'm not saying battle brothers. I'm saying like serves um, And then just build up that uh, whole the gene stock the, right. the, the pool all that good stuff um and then after a while, they come back. And that's how Space Marine chapters jump back. So, Next question comes from Lucas Bird. Do you believe the Primaris Blood Angels will be free of the flaw? No. No, they. It's it's been confirmed that they do still have the Red Thirst. Um, I'm not 100% sure about the Black Rage, but they do still have the flaw in their genes. Yes, yes. Next question. Uh, this one's also by Cage Schultz. Could Ogrins or Squats become Astartes? A Squat Space Marine would be extremely strong and durable, even for one of his size. Of course not. Um, females can, but an Ogryn and a Squat, <laughs> nope, no way, mm-mm, mm-mm. I mean, technically you could write it in the lore that maybe there's a possibility. Um, yeah, there's always a chance. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it happening because usually when you get recruits into a Space Marine, you want them to be the top of the top. Uh, squats, obviously they're not you discriminating against short people? Is that what you're doing? Uh, well, I mean, I can see it happening, but it probably won't. You're discriminating against an abhuman who was crushed because of gravity in the center of the galaxy? That's what, that's why that's why they're short. No, oh, okay. It's because they're they're made uh, based off of white dwarfs. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, that's why they're called squats because they're dwarfs, white dwarfs. Yeah, but boom. 
Ba -boom, ch -ch -ch. That's, that's, oh, yeah. But in the long run, no, because they're not as prevalent in the lore. Squats aren't even a thing. They, yeah, they're they not were a thing anymore. Destroyed by the Tyranids. And Hogrins are just stupid. Next question comes from Merrick Gruska. Hello, OMS. Thanks again for a quick answer. And as always, keep up the great work. Gracias. Today, I would like you ask you when did Slanesh get birth? In lore, it states it begun the Age of Strife and it was something like M30. Uh, well, I'll keep reading. But is there any reference which which year it was? I need that info as part of my lore for my fan base chapter, as at least faction part chapter. Yeah. The exact date, I'm not sure, not off the top of my head, but if you go to the wiki, wikia, wiki page, if you go to the wiki page, hit up the timeline, the timeline gives you the exact time, at least millennia. Yeah, another thing you gotta think about too is, it, it was, Slanesh, he, she, is the uh, youngest god birth. It was birthed because of the Eldar, you know, doing their orgies and whatnot, but it was birth in the warp. You gotta remember the warp is not a time thing, it's not bound by the rules of time. You could go into the warp and come out years later, years before. Uh, you could be like an orc where you come in just seconds before, you go into the warp and then you try to kill yourself to get a copy of the gun that you really like. So think about it that way, um, you could kind of bounce over some loopholes because the warp doesn't have a certain time frame, mm -hmm. so you could always do that. And also keep in mind that it was an imperial calendar, it was the Eldar calendar, right. which might be a little different than the imperial calendar. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get like the exact day. Next question, or the second question, he has a second question, and it says, Are there such phenomenons in Warhammer 40k universe that planets giving phase in, phase out, uh, like pops in, in and out of reality, yet suddenly they can suddenly pop out? Uh, uh, so yeah. Yeah, demon planets. Mm -hmm. um, I think the world of sorcerers is known to do that. Mm -hmm. um, there's other ones too. Yep. Um, but it's not like they come in one day and leave another day. It's, it takes a while. It's to the whim of the chaos gods and also the expansion of the warp portal itself. Mm -hmm. So in, during, or in the Eye of Terror, when the Eye of Terror expanded, more planets popped out and they were in real space. Um, yeah. LSR Atronimus. If Santa was a demon, which chaos god would he serve? Corn, Because he's red. red. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can see him being corn. Yeah, we'll go with that. Next question comes from Umdustry. Could Wa energy and its reality warping effects break the light barrier without going through the warp? Um, if, for instance, you got a couple billion orcs and put them in a really fast ship and painted it red. Oh, I get it. Uh, no, I think they're, they're still bound by the laws of physics in that sense. Because what he's saying is like if he if you painted an entire rock red, and all the orcs believe that it was going faster than the speed of light, would it go faster than the speed of light? No. So you're saying orcs can't overrule physics. Right, right, right. Next question. Uh, Simmer, Sir, Sir Matthew the Awesome. Would it make sense if orcs use multiple colors for one type of machine? For example, painting a rocket red and yellow to make it faster and blow up bigger. Yes. Wait, what was the question? So let's say you paint a, a rocket red and yellow. You know, yellow makes it go boom, red makes it go faster. Would these two things work or would one color take precedence over the other? Ah, that's a really good question. And the answer is don't think about it, just do it. Because <laughs> that's what an orc would do. That's true, yeah. Next question comes from Lil and Drill Mount. <laughs> what about Wormwood Space Hulk question? What about it? <laughs> I don't know uh, what is a wormwood space hulk I think that's what you're saying uh -huh. so the wormwood I think that's that giant space worm that um, eats um, minerals and whatnot so yeah that could be found in a space hulk um, we did a 40 facts video on it um, yeah I'll elaborate on the question a little bit because maybe I said something during that video for you to ask me but now I don't remember so elaborate on that for next video Next question. Uh, Josh Eckroth, would Lucius the Eternal be considered a perpetual? No, because he is given the, the ability to become his enemy through chaos. Um, he's not normally a perpetual, and I don't think you gain perpetualness by being aligned with chaos, since obviously the Emperor is a perpetual, 
he's not aligned with chaos. So. Well, I think it's because you die though. Because like they have those devices, the halo devices mm -hmm. that turn you, slowly turn you into chaos, but make you a perpetual. Ah, so you're saying John Dramaticus will eventually fall to chaos? Yeah, or at least Falcon. some type of dark thing. Because he uses a halo device, right? Right, as far as I know, I think so. Yeah, yeah I think that's that's the whole story of the halo devices, that they slowly corrupt you from the inside out. Mm. And then you start like getting bugs inside your stomach. Um, but I think the, the, that dude is not a... Us perpetual because um, he dies. Yeah, he does die. And if and only if the person who killed him feels good about that death, feels pride, then Lucius becomes him. Yeah, so in a way, you just, it's kind of like that Santa Claus movie. <laughs> when, <laughs> when Santa Claus dies, if you kill Santa Claus, you become Santa Claus. Yeah. Which is a really stupid way of like starting the, the movie. Um, Killing Santa. And then at the end of the movie, if you if you've seen the Santa Claus movie, like the little boy says, "I'm gonna go into the father's thing." Yeah, does that mean you're a family business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, does that mean you're gonna kill Santa Claus? You're gonna kill your dad to be Santa Claus? Or whatever. Yeah. Some people didn't don't even know because that that movie's fairly new. Right? There's like four of those movies, like the Santa Claus three, four. Um... They could have stopped that one. <laughs> Next question. Wojia Gredos. What movies do you know that have the best represent representation of what the warp would be? I just watched Stranger Things and I think the Upside Down looks really similar. Merry Star Child Day. Santa Claus 2 it does a really good representation of the warp. Um, but other than that... Um... I mean, yeah, you mentioned Stranger Things, and I guess the Upside Down is kind of like it. But not really, though, because there's no altering of the actual kid. Like, the kid comes out, what's his little, what's his name? His little name. <laughs> uh, well, whatever that kid that went into the, the Upside Down, he came back, and he felt kind of sick, but it wasn't like he was, like, morphed or changed or anything like that. Um, and really, it seems like there's only one demon in there. Well, there's a few, because obviously you had the dogs, you had that big thing, you had the Demogorgons from season one. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But like, I feel like the upside down is literally just like a flip or like a flip side of our reg of the regular world when the warp is its own thing. Yeah, because the warp has its own um, planets, it has its own everything. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I can't really think of anything um, that's like warp or like. Maybe um, the only thing I want to say is maybe kind of like uh, Marvel with uh, the X Men. I forgot what her name is, but she can like teleport. No, Nightcrawler. When he teleports, she kind of goes into a pocket dimension of like demons and stuff. For like a split yeah. second, and then he comes out in our in our world. So I guess that's kind of close. Yeah, kind of, he kind of works the way that like the Harlequins do with the webway. Right. right. Yeah, I never thought about that. Uh, but yeah, last question. Uh, this one is by <clears throat> the uh, guy, the homie, the dude, Tyler Dunn. <laughs> one Mind Syndicate. Here's a question for you: If the entire population of the Imperium of Man discovered uh, that the Grey Knights were just another Adeptus Astartes chapter, how would they react? Um, if who? The Inquisition? Just, no, not the, not the Inquisition, just regular people. Oh, they wouldn't, they really, really wouldn't care if they saw them as just another chapter. Right. Um, our thing, our argument last week was that, um, if, like, it was made aware to the entire public that the Grey Knights were specifically designed to kill <laughs> if the Grey Knights were specifically designed to kill Chaos, then um, it would... Um... Right, because then now you're, you're, you're focusing them on one specific thing, meaning that specific thing will then try to guard itself against it. Yeah, and even though the Chaos Gods know about the Grey Knights' existence, like, it's, it's, it's a difference between having, like, four powerful people knowing about a certain thing, whereas, like, an entire population to know now. So now they have to worry about cultists, they have to worry about just, like, you know small things like that mm -hmm. but yeah and those were the questions for today thank you yeah thank you for all these questions really thought-provoking if we didn't get to your question today uh, put it down in the next episode and we'll probably get to that then yes. make sure you put question before you question because we get to those first with that said we'll see you guys tomorrow sound alchemist Gershwan and we are out of here <laughs>